I'm telling you guys right now, you are making a mistake if you are ignoring the minor league tournaments and college hoops. If you're waiting for the big dance to officially get underway on Thursday. Now, I know we have two first four playing games tonight and two more tomorrow. One of them tonight I'm going to talk about, the UCLA St. Bonaventure game. Certainly two big name college basketball teams playing. But there is money to be made in the NIT tournament, in the College Insider tournament, in the CBI tournament. Why? Because the lines are not sharp. Because nobody cares. Listen, the lines are going to be absolutely razor thin right on the money for the marquee games on Thursday and Friday. They already just practically are. But these tournament games, nobody gives a damn. Most of the gambling public doesn't give a damn. The odds makers, they're sitting there going, hmm, Baylor and Wagner. What can I tell you about that game? Uh, Oklahoma State and Florida Gulf's Coast. Hmm, what can I tell you about that game? It's hard to set numbers on these games, even though these teams have played 35 games already this season, because they're non-conference games this late in the year and because you have to wonder about the motivation of these teams. Do they really care to be playing at this point of the season? Some do, some don't. Some are so horribly disappointed because they didn't get into the big dance. Again, it doesn't matter that they're a top number one seed or a two, top two seed in the NIT tournament. Eh, they don't give a damn. They're not playing on Thursday or Friday. So again, there's money to be made. Listen, look, Eric Schrader did it again last night. Another 100 dime winner in college basketball, number 11 out of 15. San Diego at home against Hartford. Easy 16 point win. The guy now raised his winnings to a $10 better, making a little over $20,000 over the past 62 days. And Jack Brayman, who's been red hot as well, top rated 100 dime college basketball winner, number 26 out of 40, 14 out of 21 this year alone. Tonight, Southeastern Louisiana and St. Mary's. Listen, I know nobody out there can name one player on either one of those teams, right? Hey, it's uh, over half price off, just like all the other 100 dime plays. You get it for over half price off by using coupon code JACK from a guy who, since he made his debut here at the site back in January of 2017, has made $10 betters in college basketball, a little over $11,000. That and all the other discounted plays, including the latest one from Brad Wilton, who cashed in last night with his under dime max wager in the NBA with the Portland Trailblazers smacking around the Miami Heat. Under dime max wager winner tonight. It's going to be in the NITs or excuse me, in the uh, big dance, the play-in game, St. Bonnie and UCLA. You get it for over half price off, and that coupon code is BRAD. Okay, now, let's talk about the NIT tournament for just a second before I get to a couple of complimentary plays. You know, the NCAA uses the NIT as a, an experiment for rule changes, and there are a couple of different changes that you should be aware of. First of all, these games in the NIT tournament here this postseason they have extended the three-point line to a little over 22 plus feet. They have widened the lane from 12 to 16 feet. So if you are a team that has size, that has some bulk, and normally plays down low, well, you've got a lot more room for your big men to roam, and you're going to get away with a lot more physical play down there too. Uh, they have switched to four 10-minute quarters instead of two 20-minute halves that you're used to. And the shot clock resets at 20 seconds after each team's offensive rebound. So, hmm, that's an interesting one, that particular one. So the shot clock resets to 20 seconds after each team's offensive rebound. Is it going to accelerate the pace of play? I do think so, and I think that's going to result in more points being scored and lean toward a little more high scoring games and perhaps a few more overs in terms of the totals. So let's talk first about the uh, game between UCLA and St. Bonaventure. The Bruins are a three point favorite in this contest. Uh, this game being played in Dayton tonight. St. Bonaventure had its 13 game winning streak snapped by Davidson. Um, hard to believe these two teams have been relegated to play in status here tonight. Uh, UCLA uh, fell in overtime in the Pac-12 semifinals to Arizona. Uh, a good showing for this team. Uh, this game all comes down to 
I think UCLA size. Listen, I'm going to call the backcourt a draw. Yes, St. Bonaventure has the outstanding senior leadership by Jalen Adams and Matt Mobley, who combined to average nearly 40 points a game in the backcourt. But damn, I don't know if you saw the UCLA backcourt. But they got Wilkes, who's like six foot eight, and then they've got uh, Aaron Holiday, who uh, averaged a little over 20 points a game. But down the stretch. Up until the Arizona game in the semifinals, the previous five games, he had averaged 28 points a game. Uh, Arizona shut him down. Uh, I think he was exhausted because he had played just about every single minute of five straight games coming into that overtime game, uh, which he played like 45 minutes in that one. They shut him down, held him to 15 points, but it's the size. They've got the seven-footer Thomas Welsh, who averages 13 points and 10 rebounds. Uh, St. Bonaventure doesn't have the size to contend with it. And... Um, you know, I think just when you th consider that Arizona, who, um, if you look at my bracket, by the way, the brackets are available for all the handicappers here at the site. You can uh, look at them. You can print them out. If you look at my bracket, I have Arizona going to the national title game against Villanova. That's how good I think Arizona is at this stage of the season. This is a team that went to Tucson and handed Arizona its only loss of the season. This is a team that carried Arizona into overtime in Vegas this past weekend before succumbing. And this is a team that uh, beat Kentucky in a neutral site way back in December when Kentucky at that time was playing some pretty good ball. Now, did UCLA have some bad losses this year? Sure. St. Bonaventure did too. So I'm willing to lay the three points with UCLA in this contest. Um, your next game is going to be Northern Kentucky against Louisville. You know, the problem here comes down to motivation. And Louisville, what a strange season. So your coach is forced out at the beginning of the year. you are got all types of NCAA sanctions that may come down on you here. God knows what's going to happen to this program. If you go to the Louisville Courier-Journal site, you'll see the reporting that was done that said that the players prior to the ACC tournament, they didn't want to go and play in any postseason tournament. And then you see a story that says that the athletic director said that, hey, you know, if you don't go to the tournament, we just forfeit the games because the school already accepted the invitation to go to the NIT. Because if they didn't go to the big dance, they didn't want to play in any tournament. I think it's been an emotional roller coaster for this team. And you got a Northern Kentucky team that last year, remember in the big dance, uh, they were a number 15 seed against a number two Kentucky. Uh, really gave the Wildcats a hell of a battle. And the Wildcats were a talented team last year. Uh, I think they lost that game by seven or nine points. And Northern Kentucky now, yes, they've only played two games the last 15 days. Uh, they got upset by Cleveland State in the first round of the, in their first game in the Horizon League tournament. But Northern Kentucky's probably pretty damn psyched to be playing Louisville. I don't think everybody in the Louisville locker room is saying, hey, damn it. Let's win one for the Gipper. Let's go out there because we're going to beat down Northern Kentucky today. This is all about beating the Norse of Northern Kentucky. I just don't think so. I mean, yeah, I just don't think so. Um, yeah, so I got to take Northern Kentucky plus the points in that game. Uh, your next game. Let's talk about a team that's made me a hell of a lot of money this year, Middle Tennessee State, a six-point favorite at home. This is a team that in a five-day stretch lost its season finale at home against Marshall. And then goes into the tournament where it's the defending champion. It's the regular season champion. And in the Conference USA tournament, it loses its first game as a double-digit favorite. I know. I lost money on them. Uh, and loses to Southern Mississippi. And in a five-day stretch, it goes from the pinnacle to the outhouse. They're on the outside looking in. They don't get a big dance invite. How do you get motivated for playing at home? Oh, and let's throw another dart. Uh, your head coach, Kermit Davis, who's been there for 16 seasons and has been so successful, is rumored to be the leading candidate to take over for Andy Kennedy, who left at Old Miss. Okay, you're coming home. You've got another home game. You were a great team this season. So you're thinking, okay, Vermont might be the play here, plus the points. They're a six-point underdog. But hold it. The Catamounts lost to Maryland-Baltimore County 65-62 to in the championship game of their tournament on a three-pointer at the buzzer. I think they had won 23 straight games against the Retrievers in that series, right? They had won 20 of 21 games 
going into that particular contest. They went 0 for 8 from the field in the final eight and a half minutes of that game. They had 13 turnovers and led to 23 points. I mean, their only loss in that stretch was a two-point loss at St. Bonaventure. But this is a team that lost by four at Kentucky, uh, beat Bradley, beat Northern Kentucky, beat Yale, beat Richmond, uh, lost by 10 to Marquette, lost by four to Northeastern, beat Harvard. It's a competitive game, I think, tonight. And I've got to grab the points with Vermont in this one. Um, here's another game for you that I think the underdog is to play because the home team was the home court advantage mean. Western Kentucky came this close to making the dance. Middle Tennessee State is knocked out of the Conference USA tournament. Western Kentucky advances to the championship game. They're playing Marshall. They beat Marshall twice in the regular season, both by double digits. What happens? They fall down 12 by with four minutes to play. They score 11 straight points to end the game. Problem is they were down by 12. They lose 67 to 66. So sure, they're a senior-laden team. They come back home. They have one more home game. Five-point favor. Boston College played a much better schedule. Boston College beat Georgia Tech and NC State, then lost to Clemson in the ACC tournament. Boston College plus five points. I'm willing to lay with Boston College in this one. And then finally, you've got Notre Dame. Eh, listen, we can talk all we want about Notre Dame. Should they have been in the dance? Yeah. If they had won one or two more games when Bonzi Colson, Bonzi Colson was out. Well, they're a number one seed in the um, NIT, one of the four number one seeds. Um, you know, they're playing Hampton. <laughs> Hampton lost by 15 points at Ryder, uh, gave up 83 points in a loss at William & Mary, gave up 96 points and lost by 36 points at Xavier, gave up 94 points and a loss by 14 points at Ryder. They gave up 88 points and lost by 14 at Missouri State, and Missouri State can't score against anybody. Uh, they got crushed 82-48 to 48 at Virginia. Um, you know, you look at the RPI, and Notre Dame's RPI was 70. But, you know... I don't have the way to break out their RPI, what their RPI was with Bonzi Colson in the lineup and without him. Uh, Hampton's RPI is 237, and they're 5-10 and 10 on the road this season. I think if Notre Dame wants to, they win this game by 30 points. And again, this is a senior-laden team that wants to play again together. And Colson, since returning after missing 15 games with a foot injury, has averaged 17 points and 9.2 rebounds. I think the Irish roll big tonight in South Bend. So now that I've given you 115 free picks, let me try to rate them for you. Uh, at the top of the list, boy, I've got to look back here and just think about all the plays I just gave you. Um, in the top tier of selections, I like. Um, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you Notre Dame, and uh, yeah, Notre Dame. And Northern Kentucky is my top tier. UCLA would be in that next tier. Vermont and Boston College would be in tier number three. Okay? That's how I rate them. Notre Dame and Northern Kentucky. Like how I'm drawing on the screen? You <laughs> do I have to do this again? And then UCLA in that next tier along with, who the hell did I just tell you? I can't even remember. Uh, but hey, listen, you got the drift. I don't have to repeat all these. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, also be careful uh, if you're interested in the Southern Cal game because uh, I was reading that Southern Cal, uh, their head coach, Andy Enfield, Enfield uh, said that he was going to let the players decide who was going to play tonight. Uh, you know, their big guy who his name escapes me. Um, you know, he may sit out to protect his draft status. He's had such an injury filled year. Now, this was earlier today when I read that in the LA Times, the story. I, want to, I, I mean, I think Southern Cal could win easily tonight, but I certainly want to play them knowing that you may not have a full lineup in there for the Trojans. So anyway, that's the deal. I wish you well. Talk to you again tomorrow.